Beautiful people, welcome back to our channel. You're here with me, Sarit and Stevie K. Okay, today, guys, we're watching top 10 places to visit in Grilla, India. Yeah, guys, um, thank you to Doc, firstly, uh, for sending the link for this one. Uh, told us to check it out. I think we'd done, obviously, a video not so long ago about India and stuff like that, and he said that this will be a good one. Sorry, I'm just, like, having a quick chore because I want to see what channel it's from. It says here, um, David's been here. That's the channel name. Just... When I mention it, guys, do check out the channel. I'll put the link to this video in the description below. So then you can obviously go there, check the video, check the, um, yeah, anything else that's on there that you might want us to react to. Guys, if there's any other videos about India or things that we, you know, could learn, we can see, we can, you know, admire and appreciate, you know, do send us some links and let us know if there's more stuff that we can do. And uh, guys, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Also check out our other two channels. Links will be in the description below. And do let us know, like I said, what else to react to. I'm just going to get on with it. Ready? Mm -hmm. Here we go. Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing amazing. This is David Hoffman from David's Bid here in beautiful Kalika, Kerala, India. I am so happy that I traveled to this state. God's own country is amazing. God's own I traveled country, for 12 cool. beautiful days from Trivandrum, the capital of the south, all the way north of Kasagod, the very northern tip. We ate lots and lots of spicy food. Tons of attractions. We saw wildlife. We went up in the mountains. We went to beaches. I mean, there's so many things to do here. 12 days is not enough, but here are my top 10 places you have to visit in God's own country when you come. Up first, we have Kerala's capital and largest city, Trivandrum. The city has a humid, jungle-like climate, which is perfect for growing trees that bear bananas and coconuts, which are a staple in the local cuisine. Trivandrum was an ancient spice trading post dating back to 1000 BC, and those spices are all used to flavor the unique southern Indian wow. food the city is known for. The city is home to one of the most prominent Hindu temples in the world, Palaman Baswami Temple which wow. also happens to be the world's richest temple. Over $22 billion worth of gold and jewels have been unearthed at the temple, which is also a prominent pilgrimage site. Just remember that only Hindus are allowed to enter. Another prominent location you should visit in the city is the Chalai Bazaar, Kerala's busiest street market. Its lanes are lined with hundreds of vendors who sell meat, vegetables, fruit, jewelry, spices, and much more. If you want to dive into Kerala's art and history, you won't want to miss the Napier Museum and Gardens, a 19th century building that houses an art gallery and archaeological finds from the area. I also recommend Kavalam Beach, which is located roughly 10.5 miles south of the city and is made up of three beaches divided by rocky outcroppings. One of the best ways to pamper yourself in India is to get a haircut and massage at a local barber shop. In Trivandrum, it doesn't get better than Mr. Barber, a small but clean shop with an expert barber who expertly trimmed my hair and beard and gave me one of the best scalp, head, and neck massages of my life. Wow. But my favorite thing about Trivandrum is the food. It's one of the ultimate mm. foodie destinations in southern India. From the flaky parotas oh, and the God. rich and tender beef curry at Good Morning Hotel to the plantain like Pazam Puri and the meaty and spicy putu curry at Edinaram Restaurant, really you can't go wrong. I also highly recommend the multi-course banana leaf meal known as Sadai, which you can get at Mother's Veg Plaza and the Spice Route inspired dishes at the award winning Villa Maya restaurant. If top notch chicken is your jam, head over to Kethel's Chicken in Chalai Bazaar, which sells a super spicy chicken fry that is coated in a mouthwatering marinade. Trust me, your stomach and taste buds will thank you. <laughs> Next up, we have the town of Kilimanjaro, which is a great day trip option located about 45 minutes drive north of Trivandrum. In Kilimanjaro, you'll find Vazikyorakala Restaurant, a traditional spot that is known for its curries and non-veg food. If you only try one thing, make it the mind-blowing squid torum, which contains tasty pieces of coconut. But I also recommend the chicken liver, duck roast, fried prawns, fish fry, and chicken curry. Wow. Outside of Kilimanjaro is the village of Chayadayamanagalam where you'll have the opportunity to try an authentic local breakfast at Jarnartha Hotel. The signature dish here is a traditional food called Pazum Kanji. It's a messy, sour, and flavorful rice gruel that you can eat with fish curry, chicken sour. curry, and fish fry. You eat everything with your hands, so don't feel weird about licking your fingers afterward. That's how you show the cooks you really liked it. The main attraction in the area is the Jatuyu Earth Center, a unique nature park that's home to an adventure center, 
a museum, a cave resort, and the largest bird sculpture on Earth. Wow. I recommend taking the cable car up to the concrete statue, which stands 70 feet tall and covers 15,000 square feet in total. If you did a lot of eating beforehand, take the 826 steps back down to burn off some of those calories. Oh. The next musty place in Kerala is the seaside resort town of Varkala. Varkala is a southern Indian paradise and one of the area's biggest tourism hotspots and it's not hard to understand why. The town's main attractions is the beautiful Varkala beach, a wide stretch of sand that is bordered by gorgeous red cliffs. On top of the cliffs is the Varkala promenade, a boardwalk that is lined with restaurants, shops and cafes. Try the cardamom coffee at Coffee Temple Restaurant and if you need one, get a traditional scarf to wrap around your head at any of the nearby shops. Even though Varkala That's is nice. very touristy, there's also plenty there of opportunities beach, huh? to immerse yourself in the local oh, culture. I recommend so taking a tuk-tuk from the promenade to Yudhara Swami Temple, an ancient Hindu temple that is over 2,000 years old. The wow. temple is dedicated to Lord Vishnu, and you'll also find idols of Gurunda and Hanuman at the entrance of the inner shrine, just off the courtyard. The main point of interest for visitors is the banyan tree, which devotees hang baby dolls from if they want to be blessed with a child. One oh. of the most traditional aspects of Kerala's there, culture okay. are the temple festivals. You can experience one at several temples in the area, including Kutikatil, Badrakali, Devi Temple. For the festival, the temple is decked out in thousands of lights, and dozens of musicians march down the parade route in a beautiful Chenda Melam and Band Melam performance. The main highlight is seeing a temple elephant, oh, wow. which is adorned with a bright, colorful idol and represents a god. Of course, you can't visit Varkala without visiting its street food stalls. You can't go wrong with one of the fluffy and doughy tata dosas, which pair perfectly with the yeah, coconut infused chicken toram and the steamed rice flour dish called putu. There's also a delicious spicy omelet, which it's makes so you feel like you're having breakfast and dinner in the same meal. The next place you have to visit yeah. in Kerala I wanna is do what he's doing. <laughs> another of South uh, India's most prominent that, tourist destinations. It's we mostly have. a farming city, but travel. it also serves as the gateway to Kerala traveling. backwaters arguably one of the most beautiful areas in the entire okay. country. But before you set out to explore the backwaters, grab a bite to eat at Brothers Hotel in town. I recommend the fish curry, duck curry, and putu. Another great spot in the area to grab a bite is New York Tolly Shop, where you can have a drool-worthy southern Indian seafood feast that includes crab with gravy, stir-fried mussels with chilies and onions, fish fry, putu, and a savory pancake called appam. But of course, the main reason to visit Alapi is to explore the Kerala backwaters, an extensive network of canals, lakes, rivers, and lagoons that were used by the Portuguese to transport spices back in the 16th century. No trip to the backwaters is complete without staying on a houseboat, which is essentially a floating Airbnb. They range in quality and price, so be sure to do your research before booking. The price will depend on the size of the houseboat and the number of rooms, but it will also cover the cost of all your meals, activities, and the crew. Activity-wise, you'll visit temples and churches along the waterways, local markets, and get to see traditional homes and paddy fields. The food is also spectacular as it's local and freshly prepared by the onboard cooks. Wow. Expect everything from fresh fruit and wow. seafood to banana fry and fried bread to some of the tastiest veg you've ever eaten in your life. For the next place you must visit, we're heading into the interior of Kerala to the Thekadi area, which is located in the Iduki district and borders the neighboring state of Tamil Nadu. There, you'll find the Periyar Tiger Reserve, a 357 square mile park in Kerala's western Ghats. Tiger it's home Reserve. to a wide variety of wildlife including 266 species of birds and 35 species of mammals, including tigers, Asian elephants, wild boar, and antelopes. One of the highlights of my stay in the Thekadi area is that I had the opportunity to witness the traditional oh, cultural art form called Katakali at the <laughs> Kod Adathanan Kalari and Navarasa Katakali Thekadi Theater. It's a form of Hindu performance art and Indian classical dance that combines comedy exaggerated facial expressions, and elaborate costumes with myths, legends, and live music. <laughs> At the same wow. complex, you can also witness a traditional martial arts performance called Kalari, which is thought to be India's oldest surviving martial arts form. It combines hyper-athleticism, sword does? fighting, stick fighting, and fire dancing. As I mentioned earlier, Thekadi is located just a stone's throw away from Tamanadu, so it's only natural that you'll want to cross the border to explore. The flatlands that lie at the base of the mountains along the border are home to some gorgeous great vineyards, as well as street vendors who sell coconuts, bananas, and broth alcohol and non-alcoholic wine. 
When you arrive back in the Thickety area, be sure to try some banana chips at Kirali Chips in the town banana of Kumali. They're a local specialty and come in several different flavors. When you stay in Thekiri, I recommend the Woodnote Resort, which is a comfortable modern hotel that boasts 29 spacious rooms and suites. Their on-site restaurant, Drizzle, is the perfect place to have breakfast and dinner. In the morning, have some delicious southern Indian breakfast of creamy chicken curry and idayapam, which are also known as string hoppers and are made up of steamed rice noodles and fresh coconut. And wow. if you're like me, you can also enjoy some incredible doses with a mouth-watering coconut chutney and a light flavorful sambar. It was so good. For dinner at Drizzle, I recommend checking out their buffet, where you can also enjoy a phenomenal Southern Indian feast for the gods. The beef curry with chilies is nothing short of amazing. It's super spicy and had my tongue completely numb by the end of the meal. Thankfully, I could still taste the incredible paneer curry and the rich and flavorful butter chicken, which were some of the best I've ever had. But by far the most incredible thing you can experience in Thekiri is to venture into the forested mountains to prepare and enjoy a meal with members of the Manam tribe. This tribe has called the mountains of Kerala home for centuries and they speak a unique dialect that's actually a mix of Malayam, Kannada and Tamil. Wow. You'll join them in preparing a traditional meal which for me included spinach with onions, roasted tapioca, local river fish, chicken curry and a thick sticky paste called ragi. This is what traveling is all about meeting new people, trying new foods, the and exposing yourself to new cultures. Oh, it's one of my favorite experiences I had in Kerala, oh, and I want you to experience it as well. Oh, Up next, like we're heading that. to Munar, also known as the Kashmir yeah. of South India. Munar is a hill station that lies about 5,200 feet above sea level at the meeting place of three rivers. With its breathtaking scenery, beautiful tea plantations, oh, and stunning mountain vistas, it's no wonder it's a popular honeymoon destination. I recommend checking into the Dreamcatcher Resort, which is about an hour's drive from Munar Town. Their rooms include four private tree houses that have their own entrances and look out over a vibrant green tea plantation. One of my favorite experiences in Munar was the traditional meal I had in the forest clearing high up in the mountains. There, I got to watch locals prepare an incredible feast of beef liver roast, mud and soup, kanthali chili prawn, He's a juicy oh, job. pumpkin payasam, and lots more. Everything was out of this world, but I couldn't get enough of the masala on the mud and leg. Ooh, so good. It made my oh. lips tingle. When you go to Munar, you have to explore Munar Town. Mm. I recommend heading into town at night so you can explore while checking out some delicious street food. There's a small Hindu temple and an enormous Christian church, as well as several shops where you can buy traditional clothing and headscarves. But the best thing about exploring food. Munar at night is the street food. Oh, body you can try my favorite Indian street food of all time. Bani Puri, oh. which is a Maharashtrian snack made of hollow, crispy dough balls that are filled with I potatoes, chutneys, oh, and spiced water called Bani. You can also enjoy some Tamal style dosas, an amazing chili fry with tapioca, parotas, and appa. You have to admit, Don't miss India's the homemade the chocolate food. at MSP and Sons, no question which not. sells 21 different varieties. Munar is also home to Kudu Kumalai Tea Plantation, the highest elevated tea plantation in the world. It's wow. located super high in the mountains, Look at the views. close to a viewpoint where you can witness one of the most epic sunrises on earth. You'll have to wake up at 3 in the morning to see it, as you have to drive one hour to Suryana Estate and then another 45 minutes up the mountain. From the top, you'll most likely see a layer of clouds far below you. The clouds the will clouds burn out as the sun rises, but not before the sky and clouds are painted in brilliant reds, purples, orange, and golds for several minutes. It was beautiful. After you witness the sunrise, make the drive down to the plantation, where you can go on a tour of the facility, try some locally produced black and lemon tea, and enjoy breakfast of dried fish, dried and fried yeah, chilies, and a fermented <laughs> rice soup with gooseberry pickles and yogurt. As we make our way north along Kerala, no, this is bad. This is what we reach the seventh to. place you must visit in Kerala, the city of Kochi. Kochi is an ancient city that was known by the Chinese, Greeks, Jews, Arabs, and Syrians in antiquity, and it also was an important hub during the spice trade. Its fort, Fort Kochi, was the first European colony in India, and you can wow. still see the old Dutch and British architectural yeah. styles in its colonial homes and churches. Yeah. One of those churches is St. Francis Church, which dates back to 1503 and is one of the oldest European churches in India. Whoa. Another notable site in the fort is the shoreline, which is home to the world famous Chinese fishing nets, which hang over the waters and catch everything from fish to prawns to crabs. The local Jew town is another area worth exploring. The roads are extremely narrow, so it's a lot easier and faster to walk than to drive. 
The area is home to the oldest Jewish synagogue in the Commonwealth nations, wow. as well as lots of craft vendors and textile shops. One of the more unique shops is the SPR Natural Home Fragrances, which sells incredible perfumes and colognes made from pure natural oils. You can also find lots of clothing and souvenir shops that sell statues, wood carvings, masks, brass, and copper work. The food in Kochi is next level. Whether you head out at night to enjoy a phenomenal egg dosa with tomato chutney, sambar, or the earthy mud baked chicken at Midnight Chicken Restaurant, you'll be in heaven. Some of my personal favorite dishes were the crunchy beef dry fry and the fresh chicken fry I tried at the street food stall in the heart of the city, as well as the succulent prawn curry I enjoyed at the Upper Berth Restaurant on the rooftop of the Coral Isle Hotel. Trust me, it will blow your taste buds away. Between the cities of Calicut <laughs> and Kanur, along India's North Malabar coast is the city of Teleseri. Teleseri is formerly known as Telecheri and is yet another historical site along the Arabian Sea. The city's most prominent historical attraction is the Telecheri Fort, which the East Indian Company built back in 1708 to help prevent local attacks against the British. The fort's 10 meter wow. high walls has a lighthouse, soldier barracks, and secret tunnels that lead to the sea. The wow. city's other main attraction is Muzupilangad Drive-In Beach, which is roughly three miles long and packed with dense sand that is stable enough to drive on. In oh. fact, it's the largest drive-in beach in Asia. It's also a popular spot where young people try driving stunts along the water's edge. But, as always, the city's magic is in its cuisine, which is stellar. Teleseri is known for its biryani, a layered rice dish that is popular biryani, throughout right? India. The best place in town to try some is the Paris Hotel, where you'll try Teleseri Dum Briyani, which contains ghee rice, coriander, chicken, fried Would onions, you? raisins, <laughs> and more. It's light on spices, but the dry coconut chutney and mango pickle provided on the side add a burst of tropical flavor. Another well-known restaurant in Teleseri is the Bombay Hotel, which serves some of the best string hoppers I've ever eaten. String hoppers. Try them with an equally delicious egg curry, which is made up of juicy tomatoes, roasted onions and perfectly cooked oh boiled my. egg. Mix everything up no, in your hands and thing. dive in. If you need a cold drink to help you cool mm. down after a long day in the hot Teleseri sun, check out Vito's Cool Bar, where you can get a milky frozen drink called the Cocktail. It's a cool, refreshing blend of papaya, carrots, banana, dried nuts, pomegranate seeds, a, dried fruit, sounds, and sounds milk. Beautiful. If you're in the mood for street food snacks, you can find a bunch of masala coated french fries called chicken feet and hot milk with semolina and vermicelli noodles at stalls near Telesere Pier, which dates back to 1910. Of course, you can visit the North Malabar coast in Kerala and now visit the region's largest city, Kanur. Back in the 12th century, Kanur was an important trading post that did business with Persia and Arabia. But today, it's a beautiful port city, which means you'll find tons of fish there. If you want a wild experience in Kanur, head over to any of the city's fish markets. You can watch fish being offloaded from their boats, auctioned, and sold to vendors before they're butchered and purchased again by customers. You can buy all kinds of seafood there and at the harbor, including prawns, marlins, sailfish, and even stingrays. Within the Kanur district, just outside of town, is Isri Subramanya Swami Temple in the town of wow. Payanur. It's one of the district's most sacred sites. You can only go inside if you're Hindu, but you can oh, visit yeah, the temple's so pond and feed the fish that live the there. Outside. If you're I'll into you culture, the, the Kanur yeah, district is one of the handful of oh, areas in Kerala where you can witness the ritual known as Teyam. It's an ancient form of ritual worship that takes place in the Kulutunadu area of Kerala between November and February. Some of Thayam's traditions oh. and customs date back to as far as the Neolithic period. Its worshippers believe the rituals give them a direct channel to God. At the other end of the religious spectrum in Kanar district is one of my personal favorite things I did in Kerala, which is attend an Indian Christian wedding in the oh. nearby city of Kasaragad. There, I had an amazing opportunity to watch cooks prepare massive vats of biryani, wow. duck roast masala, chicken 65, beef roast, katunad duck curry, and more before attending the wedding and enjoying a southern Indian feast with 1,500 other guests for a wedding. reception afterward. Amazing southern Indian food is never ending in Kanur, from the rich, tropical, and flavorful chicken and egg biryani at Hotel Jaya to the drool-inducing mackerel, mussels, and fish curry I'm at the Malakur Hotel. 
You can also find outstanding dishes on the street, including a polenta-like beef curry with putu, spicy mussels with tapioca, mutton the, liver with strips of flatbread called patel, and a meaty stir-fried beef dish called beef chili. You can also enjoy an incredible feast of delicious mussels and southern Indian seafood at the beautiful Seashell Harris Beach Home and take a day trip to the nearby Union Territory of Mahe to enjoy some alcohol. I recommend the Oro Brandy from Karnataka. Last but not least is the city of Kalika, another historical port city along the North Malabar coast. The city traded with Arab merchants this guy as early as the 7th century, earning it the nickname the City of Spices. Today, Kalika is Kerala's third largest city and boasts an impressive array of places to visit, including the Mishkal Mosque, a medieval mosque that's very unique because it doesn't have a dome or a minaret. For some quality shopping, head over to Kanayeko Bazaar along SM Street, where you can buy a masala coated snack mix and sweet and tasty halwas, souvenirs, jewelry, and even get a haircut and shave. The head massage I got here was incredible, practically orgasmic. At nearby wow. Kapar Beach, also known as Vasco da Gama Beach, you can see where the famous that Portuguese explorer yeah. first landed Beach in food. India on May 17, 1498, making him the first European People. to discover the sea route between Europe and Asia. Further inland is a pillar-like monument that is dedicated to him and his arrival in India. Like Teleseri and its fellow southern Indian city of Hyderabad, Calicut is famous for its biryani. At Kutuchira Biryani Center, you can get a taste of Calicut Biryani, which contains tomatoes, chilies, garlic, onions, ginger, coriander, cashews, crispy onions, and short grain Ooh, rice. Never like you can that get it with buffalo, it? fish, or chicken, mm -hmm, and it's gone. honestly one of the best so biryanis I've ever, ever had. For a different type of biryani, so head over to Modern Restaurant, where you can try their macro biryani along with their masala coated squid with shallots and coconuts, and their fried kingfish with curry leaves. If you'd rather have a quick snack, check out the Bombay Hotel, which offers a variety of snacks including bonda, bada, banana fry, surgeon, carrot cake so and even a special layered type of chai called dancing chai. You'll dancing find even chai. more snacks at the Ramath restaurant including a mashed and stuffed plantain called unakaya Ooh. as well as savory dishes like the unreal muscle biryani and the mutton chaps. For street food, head out to Calicut Beach after dark to try the refreshing green pea masala and then head down the beach to the Shaf family restaurant to try their unique cassava biryani and sardine curry. The cassava biryani is a rich and fatty Funny. mixture of cassava and beef ribs with no rice at all. Finish up with their unique take on faluda, which is unlike traditional faludas <laughs> because it's served in a bowl happen. instead of a cup mm, with nice fruit, food. almonds, vermicelli noodles, and wafers. It's topped with an upside down ice cream cone and is a sweet and wild way to end your time oh in Kerala. And if you love this video, please give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment below, yeah. and share this video with all your friends so they can come to God's own country. It's a must visit when you travel to India. Wow. God, David's been everywhere? Guys, I was going to say, okay, whilst that's happening, guys, uh, do check out his channel. It says uh, David's been here. If you haven't done it so already, I'm guessing you guys already probably been on his channel. Uh, like I said, I'll stick the link. Um, yeah, we'll definitely uh, give a like and we are sharing he it with you guys. He's probably the best one I've seen so far. The, the amount of detail he goes into is, uh, that's what we wanted. Like the last one we watched a while ago, something that was yeah, really, yeah. It was like, these are the things we want to want, know, like, you know, places to visit. You're showing us around food. It, People, and the temples, about it as bit of well. history. Yeah, uh, and he was love. just off, yeah. And he was, and it was good, so like having the voiceover did. over, but just showing us the yeah. visuals kind yeah. of thing. And, and not only that, he came really in there in between as well. Like, you know, he's not like he wasn't in there. It's really but well it was, presented, the way well, he did it all. Didn't everything. Like miss anything out. And did you know it was 21 minutes, 50 seconds long? And, and he didn't feel like it. More. And See, I love watching stuff like this. So sometimes I get so really bored, good. like, oh my God, I'm sitting here for this long. But stuff like this. Because it was very interesting. So and not only that, it, it, it just kept you, like, you know, you wanted want to see more. You want to learn more. You want to know more. And not only that, with, like you said, the top 10 places to visit, it didn't matter where you... It just made you feel like it doesn't matter where you go, which place you go. It, it, you, you know, it was a treat. It was like, wow. It was like different, you know, the feeling, the look of it. 
And fair play, it just made me feel like I don't want to do reactions anymore. I want to like start trying. I want to go. I want to start doing this. When we're coming dark, you know what to you'll be having to start. Guys, anyone, anyone in any of those places live there because we'll need we come down. We need people like show us about and what best places to eat. You've got places to eat. There's a beach. Things to see. Loads of temples I can't go to. I'll be going, you'll be waiting outside for me. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so but I tell you, still, you'll be able to walk around and admire and appreciate, you know, well, everything. It does, it does I loved sense. how he went with the, you know, the, the food when he was eating with them, you know, they said that that's little tribe that, yeah, like, you know, so all the, the three yeah, different languages that they yeah. speak. And eating with them, even that, you know what, that is, a lovely guy, doesn't wow, you know, wow, just like, mingling, gets, he gets to go behind scenes in, in restaurants yeah. and, See, you know, get to see things that you know. Let Let us know if there's any other videos that he's done. I don't know. You know, I haven't seen his channel, but I've got to click on this one and like this one. I must um, say, it's made me feel so, a bit depressed though, because it makes us feel like, oh, what a boring life. We just sit here. I just love to be doing stuff like that, just traveling and seeing the world. So no. See, is he? Is he? Is this how he makes his money? As well as like, is this his living, seeing the world and oh, no, as well. As <laughs> well. <laughs> Do you want to join you? <laughs> um, anyway, guys, that was the video. Do let us know if there's anyone like any other videos from his channel, or if there's anyone similar to him that you know it's a flowing video around India and stuff like that. That's quite enjoyable to watch. Do let us know. Send us links I if really you can. Enjoyed his. And we're hungry, so I'm gonna go. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. See you Bye. soon. Bye.